All right. All right. It says we're live. So I'm going to assume we are until somebody tells me differently. I hope that you guys are uh, out there today. It's early noon o'clock here in Central Texas. Don't know where, what time it is, wherever you are. <laughs> so uh, come on in here if you're here, if you're able to. Everybody's probably at work. I don't know. I just figured I'd do this. I think I told you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, my wife works during the day. So I have to pick her up from work at 630 because she doesn't like to drive when it's dark outside. And so uh, I'm not able to do a 7 p.m. show on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I'm going to be doing them uh, on – anytime I do one on one of those days, it's either going to be earlier in the day or later in the in the evening. I'm also having a little bit of allergies. We have uh, ragweed all over the land, just all over the land. And it's all flowering out and all that right now. So, All right, everybody, welcome. My name is Michael Bunker. This is the Bunker Nation Show Early Edition. Thursday edition. And so come on in here. I'm going to go ahead and do the box thing. And as soon as the boxing's over, we'll jump on into it. All right. So I really don't have a plan for today's show. I don't have a topic. I don't have a rant planned. Anything could happen, as you know. I do this show on my own. I don't have a research assistant. I don't uh, write things down generally, unless there are questions that I'm supposed to remember to answer. And I did get some questions uh, after the last couple of shows, but I didn't write them down. So I'm sitting here without notes. Hello, Oklahoma. Good to see you. Y'all come on in, uh, write in the comment section, wherever you are. And, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to have us a conversation. If you've got questions or things you want to talk about, pile on in here and let's talk about those things. Hello, Ethan. Good to see you. I think Ethan's in Alaska. Anyways, uh, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you have questions or comments, get them in early. Type them into the comment section wherever you are. If you're watching on Periscope, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, type them in. That way, if I run out of things to talk about or if there's nothing that I want to talk about, then uh, I can just scroll, scroll through and go through the questions. So if you have anything at all you want to talk about, type it in. Also, just come in and say hi. Uh, type in the comment section. Make sure you hit the like button. <clears throat> if you're on the YouTubes, uh, hit the like button. Those are very, very valuable. Hello, Oregon. Good to see you. Uh, those are very valuable to me, uh, those likes and subscribes over on, on YouTube. By the way, we're at 1,864 or something subscribes. I generally tend to lose two or three on every broadcast because I'll say something that'll piss you off. And since you have the incapacity to be able to listen to anybody that disagrees with you, even about one min minute point, I will lose several people on every broadcast. However, slowly and surely we gain subscribers as time goes on, although it's very, very slow. According to the experts, once we get past 2,000, which is only 136 away at the beginning of this program, then things will start to pick up because YouTube will recommend the show, show more often to more people. I'm having a little allergy deal. I'm going to take a little wipey, little baby wipey and uh, and wipe my nose so I don't start glistening. So um, that's kind of an update on the subscribers. I uh, also wanted to tell you, I'm able to do the show sometimes during the day like this because I've got direct solar power, which means it's not even really passing through the batteries, although it kind of is. The batteries are all dead. It's coming through and it's charging my solar box, which is what is charging the laptop but the actual internet itself is running directly through the solar power because it's really, as you can see back here, coming through the banner uh, here, there's uh, a lot of sunshine outside. So that's kind of what's going on. We, we picked up two new batteries a week or two ago, and then uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we're going to pick up four more new batteries. I'm not hooking any of them up until I have all the ones that I want. <laughs> Talk to my dad today because we go up to Lubbock and he takes us to Sam's. They have a Sam's club there. That's where we get the six volt uh, golf cart batteries. I talked to my dad today and he said he talked to the battery manager. And hello, Frank. He talked to the battery manager at the Sam's club. And that guy said that the manufacturer of those batteries, because they are primarily used for golf carts and solar panels. All right think right now, based on what's going on in the world, it's mainly solar uh, applications. 
The, uh, the manufacturer is 1 million batteries back ordered just to Sam's Club. Just to Sam's Club. That's why I keep telling you that I'm kind of in a jam. I'm kind of in a hurry. And while we're doing this fundraiser, because I need to get those batteries and I need to get them hooked up to my system before the election so that if it's possible and there's still an internet, I can continue to talk to you guys live and give you wisdom and understanding during troubling time. We're still four batteries short. It's going to be about $500. If you guys can help out, uh, make sure you do. There, uh, I'll talk more about how to do that by the end of the show. Also, this week, I got my copy, a paperback copy of God in the Storm, and hardback copies to sign. So if you ordered hardback copies, they are on the way. There's still two more steps before you get them, and it has been a chore getting them to you, but they are here at my place. I will be signing them today. They will be shipped back to the shipping point tomorrow, and then they'll go out to you. So Hopefully within a week or so, you're going to have your hardback co signed hardback copy. I got my uh, paperback copy in, one for my wife, and I sat down yesterday during the day and read the whole book. And you can, if you are an able reader, read it in one day, in one sitting if you want. Um, this is a fantastic book. Sometimes it takes a while because we worked on this book for two or three years. Sometimes it takes a while for an author to be able to sit back and read his own work and not be focused on word choice and sentence structure and imagery and actually be able to sit back and enjoy the book. I can now read Wick uh, portions of it or read uh, Brother Frank or read Pennsylvania and I can enjoy it. And I can tell you, you know, if I would have done something different or, if there, you know, I can know if there's things I would have changed. <laughs> Uh, having written this book basically two to three years ago and then been working on it ever since then, a lot of the research and all that kind of stuff, uh, to sit down yesterday and read the whole book cover to cover was fantastic. I need to, uh, I hate to be itching my nose in front of you all, but that's just the way it is. Anyways, it's a really, really good book and people should read it. The parts where it talks about uh, Antifa and the comparisons between Antifa and the Khmer Rouge are very important for you to understand because then you can have a roadmap on what's likely to be happening over the next couple of months and years. Another thing I noticed, which like I said, we wrote, uh, wrote this starting a couple of uh, years ago, long before COVID, the book was done before COVID, um, is the, uh, pointing out that the uh, uh, Khmer Rouge used the term um, new, not, uh, we say new normal now. Uh, they used the term new ordinary all the time. And it was part of their propaganda was that what was happening around you was the new ordinary. All right. It wasn't because after they got their butts kicked by the Vietnamese army and got kicked out of there, which uh, was too late to save 2.5 million uh, people who were genocided. But once they got their butts kicked, things went back to a relative form of normal after 2.5 million people were killed. And so that's a part of the book, and it's all in there, so you ought to go read it. Uh, and, and I was really, really happy to read it and not be disappointed. Sometimes I read my stuff later on, and I'm like, oh, come on, guy. You could have done better. But this is an important book, and it's the reason, main reason I want you to read it is because I want you to share it with other people. I want you to buy five copies and give them away as gifts coming into the holiday season. I want you to give them to people for Halloween, give them to people for Thanksgiving, give them to people for whatever December holiday you practice, because it's important. People need to know what's going on, and the best light by which to guide thy feet is the light of history. And so this not only has history in it, but it's also talking about the comparisons of exactly what's happening today. So uh, that's another thing that's going on. Um, I got some fitness questions that came in, and I'll try to remember them because I didn't write them down. The mainest one that I get all the time, and nobody really listens because there's so much uh, diet noise out there, is uh, how do I uh, set up my diet? 
Um, depending on whether I'm trying to lose fat, which I do on occasion, or I'm trying to gain muscle, which I also do. And you can do those two things at the same time. I either uh, 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 set my diet up to where I'm at a slight caloric deficit so that I'm losing uh, a little bit of, of weight slowly, or I set myself at a very slight caloric uh, surplus if I'm trying to gain a little. Right now, this moment, I'm at a little bit of a caloric surplus. And uh, so uh, during that time, I can eat some more calorie dense foods, higher calorie dense foods. Whereas when I'm in a caloric deficit, I try to eat low calorie dense foods. The reason you eat dense foods is so you don't have to eat as much. If you just eat empty calories, you, you're hungry all the time. You're empty and you're hungry. So let's say you eat a power bar, a, a, a protein bar. I'm not saying don't eat them, but you eat a protein bar that's 300 calories. You know, regardless of how much protein it has in it and how much great things it has in it, it's still only that big. And you're going to eat it and it's going to sit, it's going to be one third of your stomach and your body's going to process it fairly quickly. And then you're going to be hungry and you're going to be really hungry and you're going to want to eat more and you're going to want to eat more. If you can fill your stomach up for 300 calories. So uh, if I can eat 287 calories of chicken uh, or uh, half of that and then broccoli and some rice or something and my stomach is full to bursting with the same amount of calories, then I'm not hungry again in an hour. You see, I can go longer between eating and I'd stay satiated and I don't go binge. So that's the way I do it. I look at my uh, my daily, uh, what I normally burn, my maintenance calories, and I adjust like a, a pilot flying a plane. I adjust my calories up or down slightly. You don't jerk the wheel. You don't react. So you're not reacting to the fact that you put on two pounds yesterday or you lost three pounds yesterday. Don't, don't, uh, pull the wheel. Just, I, I react by the week, not by the day. So if I want to add a hundred calories, I add a hundred calories. If I want to take off a hundred calories, I take off a hundred calories and then I watch how I react to it. And that allows me to finely tune and fly the plane. What I try not to do is I don't, like I said, I don't uh, worry if I have a day where because of events, because I go out with my wife or because uh, we're busy or uh, two days ago, I had to go to town four times because I had to go take cattle to the, uh, the cattle sale. And I ate probably 500 more calories than I usually eat. And so if it jerks forward and all of a sudden I look down and I've gained three pounds in one day, that's mostly water. It's mostly glycogen that's because of the carbs. I don't react. I don't care. I just keep going and I, I take my measurements per week. Hello, Blue Skies of Montana. Good to see you. Michigan's here. I don't know what Bowden Boss means. Have no clue what that means. Maybe you meant something else and then Boss. I don't know. San Rico's here from South Africa. Good to see you. Kim is here. I think Pennsylvania, if I'm right. Frank is here from Texas. Good to see you. Hope you guys are all uh, doing well. Um, and I use the word guys universally. <laughs> Come on in here and type in the comment section if you got questions or comments. How do you determine how many calories you usually take in per day? I have a video on this on my fitness channel, but I'll go through it real quickly. Here's what I do. I take a week to 10 days and I don't do anything special. In fact, I make my mind not do, I don't do anything to, uh, people are justifiers and rationalizers and they'll jerk with the numbers. Don't jerk with the numbers. Just write down everything you do, everything that goes into your mouth, other than water and black coffee. Write it down, write, figure out the, uh, the, the calories and you can do that through a free app called MyFitnessPal. Make sure you're doing it right. Most people do it wrong and they do it wrong because they're not paying attention. So when you look at something and it says the calories on it and you just assume that that's what you ate, it couldn't be it could be wrong. Perhaps 
you have a package of chips that's that big. For everybody in the history of the world, that's one serving, right? And it says 180 calories, and you eat it, and you write down 180 calories. But if you actually had read it, it might say that there are three um, servings in that package. You just ate way more than 180 calories. When you pop 10, 20 grapes in your mouth, you got to make sure that you're 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 writing all that down. So keep your calories every day. Don't change anything. Live like you live your life for seven to 10 days. Let's say seven days. And what you do is you write those calories down and every day you have a calorie total. Let's say you had 2,300 calories one day, you had 3,200 calories the next day, you had 2,600 calories the next day, you had 4,000 calories the next day, whatever. You write all those down. At the end of seven full days, drop the top two, drop the bottom two, take the middle three, add them together and divide by three. So you get an average of the three median days. It's a, it's an average median. That is your calorie uh, standard that you're eating now. It doesn't mean you're not getting fatter. It doesn't mean you're not already at a surplus. It just means that's what you're eating right now. Start with that. So let's just say yours is 3,000 calories a day, 2,800 calories a day, whatever it is. When you start to exercise and you start to walk and you start to to uh, start your program, just knock off 250 to 500 calories a week. That's it, a whole week, not a day, a week. You might try 200 a day if you want to, if it doesn't uh, cause you to get, our whole goal is not to get extremely hungry. So you're gonna change the foods that you're eating. Instead of eating 110 calorie Wonder Bread or 150 calorie Wonder Bread, eat the same sandwich, but eat the 45 calorie Sara Lee uh, bread, which is delicious and have the same sandwich. But instead of putting uh, mayonnaise on it, perhaps you put mustard, which has no calories or you find a low cal mayonnaise. Eat the same food you were eating, but just find a better version of it lower calories, knock off a couple of hundred calories. I I, I do a couple hundred calories a day. If you can do say 300 calories a day, that's uh, two thirds of a pound of fat you will lose in a week, which is a pretty good standard, half a pound to a pound to a pound and a half a week. If you lose two pounds in a week, that's not bad. Just try not to lose too much. And the reason you you don't want to lose too much is because you're going to lose a lot of water weight you're going to start getting hungry. And when you're hungry, you make bad decisions. Eventually, so let's say you get to the end of the first week, Don, and uh, and you've knocked off 200 calories a day. So you knocked off 1,400 calories in the week, and you find out that you still gained a pound. You're still not measuring every day. Don't, don't adjust anything based on a day's weight. You do the same thing the second week. Drop the highest two calories, drop the lowest two calories, take the middle. You're weighing yourself every day. Do the exact same thing. Drop the highest two weights, drop the lowest two weights, and take the median of the three. If you're ca- if you have gained a pound and a half or two pounds, then you re- you've come to realize that you are already eating at a surplus and you're still at a bit of a surplus. So you want to drop a little bit more in calories. Drop another 100 or 200 a day or 250 a week or whether it, whether it is. That's the next step. Eventually, you're going to find a place where you're either staying the same, your weight is staying the same, and that's called your maintenance calories. Now you know. Now you know what your uh, maintenance calories are. Now you drop it a couple of hundred and you'll start losing weight. It's the second law of thermodynamics. It can't change. All right. So that's how you do it. Once you get to a place where you're comfortable, you're learning to eat uh, low-calorie, dense food. Uh, 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 Mary, if you don't want to eat bread, that's fine by me. I don't really care. Uh, You can still find other foods. You can eat more spinach, which fills your stomach up, more uh, 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 dense foods. I don't like to get into any restrictive advice. So I don't tell anybody 
don't eat bread, don't eat meat, don't eat vegetables, don't eat things that are white, don't eat starches, don't eat this. I don't get into that because I don't believe in it. I think anybody can lose weight on any diet if you're in a caloric deficit. The difference between the diet that I advocate and the diets that everybody else is on, keto, carnivore, vegan, all this other kind of stuff, is that mine recognizes that human beings are weak, that they are going to eventually fall off. 94 to 97% of the people fall off their diets. And when you're on a restrictive diet, the thing you're going to fall off into is the thing you have previously restricted. And I know that there are zealots out there who can eat nothing but... Um, uh, 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 you know, polywogs the rest of their life, and they'll go around uh, proselytizing the polywog diet. They are zealots. Human beings are omnivores. If you're not a zealot and you cut certain foods out of your diet because whatever somebody convinced you of or whatever uh, thing that you're into, those diets work. Carnivore works. Keto works. I use those things because they are good for certain health problems for healing yourself up. But if you try to stay on those diets for the rest of your life, you're going to fall off of it if you're one of 97% of the people. And when you do fall off of it, you're going to binge on things. The weight's going to come back. You're going to damage your heart and all of other kinds of things are going to happen. The best thing you can do, in my opinion, is find yourself a stable diet that uh, utilizes uh, nutrient rich foods that fill you up, that allows you to maintain a caloric level that is good for you. If you want to stay the same weight for the rest of your life, you can find your maintenance calories. You can stay at that and you can do it for the rest of your life. If you want to continue to lose weight very slowly, like landing a plane over a couple of years, you can do that with this diet and you can adjust it uh, minutely or you can gain, if you want to gain muscle, you can eat more protein and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, Mary, well, you got your opinion. <laughs> okay. So, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's, that's anecdotal. The, the diet works is the point. And some people are going to love it. I love it. I'm able to eat French toast and I can eat chocolate and I can eat pretty much potatoes and rice and chicken and all of the things that humans were kind of designed to eat. And I don't have to restrict myself. Um, so I'm very happy that it's working for you. Spinach is 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 uh, is really really good. It actually fills you up, and it's a good good food. I didn't really mean to get too much into diet stuff, but if you guys have questions, I'm here. Um, it, it, and like I said, if there's something that you can't eat because it bothers your system, then don't eat it. But realize that most people have inflammation, and they. Uh, Canned spinach is not as good, certainly, you because it's already shrunk. You don't want it shrunk. You want it fresh because it's full. You want to be full. You could actually dehydrate spinach down to that big, and you get all the nutrients, but it, it's not going to fill your stomach. We want your stomach full. We want you to be happy and satiated. So you can eat a, a burrito that big. You can get a, a perhaps a low-calorie wrap. And uh, they they make those. In fact, Don, they have them at um, Shop and Basket. Look for the, it's called Carb Chopper. It's low carb, low sugar uh, uh, wraps. And you can put some meat on there, fill those things up. You can eat, one of them will fill you up and you won't be hungry for hours. Just put yourself a big old handful of spinach on there and uh, and you're good to go. So I'm going to be making more videos on that, but I got to have the batteries first so that I can do the editing on my laptop. All right. So, and I wanted to thank everybody who is emailing and message me. I've said some of you all lost 50 pounds, 70 pounds, 30 pounds, 10 pounds, five pounds, whatever. The mainest thing of my diet is exercise, walk, drink a lot of water, low calorie dense foods, Watch your calorie intake and 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 adjust it. All right. Hope everybody's doing all right. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and get them in. Uh, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I'll be here as long as you guys have questions and comments. What else is going on? My wife and I and my daughter, Sarah, are going up to Arkansas starting, Lord willing, next Thursday. So we're already in the planning stages. Uh, 
uh, a mess of my children and grandchildren live up in Arkansas. So we're going to go up there. We're going to spend five days up there doing stuff, having fun, Lord willing, and uh, get to see everybody, see the grandchildren and then um, children and grandchildren. And then we're going to come back. We're, we're leaving here on Thursday. We're coming back, I think, on Tuesday of the next week. And, and then uh, we'll be back on schedule. So that's kind of something that's going to be going on. It's going to affect my schedule. I'm hoping to do a show or two from Arkansas while I'm up there. And we may be doing, and I, and some of you on Facebook already know this and some of you may not. Uh, I'm going to be doing a nothing but McDonald's for one day challenge. I have not eaten McDonald's for 30, over 30 years. And it may be 40. I don't know. I don't know when I ate before then, but for 30 years, I have not eaten at McDonald's. I have stopped there and used their restroom, and I have had coffee from uh, McDonald's. There's a McDonald's, I believe, in post Texas, and I have stopped there to use the restroom and bought a coffee before, but zero of their food have I eaten in 30 years. I don't eat fast food in general at all. And so I don't stop at Taco Bell. I don't eat Burger King. I, same amount of time, probably. Uh, the only thing you could call possibly fast food that I eat is rare, rare occasions, maybe twice a year, maybe three times a year. My wife or my daughter want to pull into Sonic and I will get something from Sonic. Um, and usually it does not do well with me. It doesn't settle well in my stomach, but I had a breakfast burrito from Sonic maybe a month ago. If my daughter gets a burger and tots, I make her pay the one tot tax for driving her to Sonic, but I don't eat um, fast foods. Uh, and so um, I do eat five guys. I like it. It doesn't hurt my system. The ones that are more like they make it after you get there and you go in, I don't go through the drive through um, then, you know, I'll eat that. Um, so the whole point of the McDonald's challenge, the one day challenge is, first of all, I need a viral video. I need uh, 2000 subscribers. And since most of the people here, some of you are different, most of you will never recommend, you will, you will email me or you'll message and you'll comment and you'll say, this changed my life. This was wonderful advice. This is a great channel. I love it. And you'll never tell anybody else about it. And so there's zero possibility that any of my videos are going to go viral because nobody shares them. A few people, one or two people, but you could share these videos so easily. Since that's never going to happen, I'm going to do a couple of challenges that have the possibility of going viral. The fact that I have not eaten McDonald's in 30 years, and I'm going to eat it for 24 hours. At least that's notable. Somebody might click on it and somebody might watch it. It's also for science because I'm really curious. Every time for the last 30 years that I have driven by a McDonald's or a White Castle or something, I have looked at those people lined up for that place and going, what in the hell do they think they're doing? This is not food. This is not human food. So I'm going to do it just to experience it so that when I'm telling people about fitness and I'm telling people about what food does to their bodies, I will at least have some knowledge of that. Believe me, you can get obese not eating fast food. I have not had fast food. I do not eat fast food. And yet I was obese. As little as nine months ago. Yeah, it's for science. But I'll be real honest with you. It's for clicks and views because there's no other way that I'm ever going to have a vibe. I could do a video where I absolutely had traveled to the future. And I tell you minute by minute everything that's going to happen for the next three years. And it begins to happen and no one would share my video. <laughs> I would get seven comments. And so people were on the thread on Facebook where I said that I was going to eat McDonald's, nothing but McDonald's for 24 hours. And they were like, why would you do that? That thread, last time I checked, had over 90 comments. The thread where I was talking about uh, the, um, uh, the facts about the debate had seven comments. 90 comments from people because I said I was, I haven't even gone to McDonald's. 90 comments, seven talking about something that could be of vital interest because we could be in a civil war in the next 30 days. 
Does that tell you something? People don't share my stuff. Some of you do. I exempt yourself if you do. The rest of you do not. You do not comment and and you don't tell people to subscribe. And so I end up getting around 32 subscribers a month, which is about one a day. And this show's pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't say crazy things other than I, I prove the fact that I'm a time traveler. Other than that, I don't say crazy things. You get good wisdom. You get information. It's entertaining. On occasion, on occasion it's funny. But so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for science. All right. Uh, sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin is my kryptonite. Oh, yeah. If you guys right now, or if you're a future person, by the way, if you're a future person, because it does not say live right about here. If it doesn't say live right here, you're a future person. You're watching this in the future. Go into the comment section. Do it on YouTube, but you can do it in the comment section wherever you are right now. And tell me what I should order during my 24 hours of McDonald's. You know, 24 hours, and I'm not just going to eat three meals. It's not just going to be, oh, I'm going to, like, try to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to eat some serious amount of food from McDonald's for 24 hours. And I'm going to tell you afterwards what it does to my body and what it does to my system. Is Danielle going to stand by with a stomach pump? I have not asked her whether she wants to participate. I cannot do Taco Bell. Only reason I cannot do Taco Bell is because I already know Taco Bell is the last fast food I gave up on. And that was probably around 2005. So 15 years ago, maybe 2006. And my house is 25 minutes away from the, the Taco Bell and I could not make it home ever. So Taco Bell was the last thing I gave up on because there's just no way that that's good for me. <laughs> that wrecked me every time I ate it. And there was food poisoning once a month from Taco Bell and our Taco Bell in Brownwood, Texas actually got closed down because of food poisoning. Are you going to stick to your calorie count? Almost certainly not just because it would almost be cheating. <laughs> right now I'm about 3000 calories a day. 3,000 calories of McDonald's is if I'm really, really trying to make a point of eating the foods that people eat at McDonald's is going to be like a meal and a half. And that really wouldn't be fair. So I probably will not stick to my calorie count. And I can do that because of the way that I manage my weeks. I can have peak days, what they call binge days or cheat days. And I can have days where I just uh, fast or I don't eat. Because those drop off. They don't even count in the total. McGriddles. Pancake sandwiches with the meat of different varieties for breakfast. All right. That sounds like a slam dunk deal right there. Only because how can they mess that up? Perhaps there's not as much uh, <laughs> salt or gluten or I don't know. Sausage biscuits with egg is edible. I stop in the Brownwood store every once in a while on my way north. It's about the only store open in the early morning hours. Uh, Big Mac, large fry shake for lunch. Almost certainly going to do a Big Mac at some point just because I think you have to. Two sausage egg and cheese McMuffins and a medium fruit smoothie is a delicious breakfast. I may end up doing quite a few of these. I may end up having an uh, epic cheat day. And then I'm just going to uh, report the next day how all that works out with my body. Um. I can imagine it's not going to go well, but you know, I've had uh, epic cheat days before that had nothing to do with McDonald's. So um, I came off a of fast uh, just the, not too long ago and we went to a Mexican food place and I had probably a thousand calories in about seven minutes and it didn't do very well with me. <laughs> All right, y'all, if you got questions or comments, now's the time to get them in. Otherwise we're going to cut it short. If you have, <laughs> pardon me, that's not COVID, that's allergies. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, uh, let me know. Uh, type things down in the comment section. After this show is over, if you guys want to help out, here's what you do. Everybody that's watching this video or that's watching it in the future, if you're a future person because it doesn't say live, I ah, keep going. Uh, anyway, whatever. If it doesn't say live up there, it's not live. You're a future person. You're watching this. Go down in the comment section on YouTube and leave a comment. 
anything you write there is good. Just leave a comment because that's really, really going to help. Uh, John said in Arkansas, so I guess no Texas specific foods. I think they did a Texas burger, maybe. I don't know. Um, we're going to, I don't know if we're going to do it in Arkansas, if we're going to do it on the day that we're driving to Arkansas. So we'll stop at some McDonald's along the way. I don't know how we're going to do it. Sarah's going to do it with me. Won't be that big of a shock for her because she eats fast food and I don't. Um, and I haven't for a very, very, very long time. So I, I would imagine uh, it's going to be pretty rough on my system. But it's also a lesson in the fact that you can do things. If you're traveling, you can, if you know, even if it's not good for you, you can have a day where you eat stuff you normally wouldn't eat. And you can uh, adjust and you're going to be fine. If you're, if you're eating right and you have a plan and you're not freaking out, and you don't go and change your whole plan because you had one one uh, 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 cheat day and you gained nine pounds. That's not real uh, fat. That's, you didn't get, not gain nine pounds of fat in one day. It's mostly going to be water and glycogen, and you can take it the next day, and there's things you can do to adjust and make sure everything's okay. <laughs> On the road. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, but if I'm stopping at every McDonald's, then I could use their bathroom and then refill. So I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it. I have to talk to Sarah and I have to find out if Danielle wants to do it. She probably doesn't want to because she's constantly dealing with, uh, you know, trying to get her system uh, right and working. I like Waffle House. I don't consider Waffle House fa fast food. So I like Waffle House. There's some places I know that if I eat there, I'm going to have gastrointestinal distress. Waffle House is not one of them. For example, I like to eat a breakfast burrito in the morning. And there's about three places in or uh, four places in Coleman to get breakfast burritos. Some of them are really good and some of them are average. Uh, I generally get a breakfast burrito at the donut store. And I don't get sick when I do. And so that tells me that they're probably just using stuff they got down at the grocery. And uh, and then there's a, a burrito place downtown, which um, is pretty good. And I don't generally get sick of that one either, but they're really big. It's a big burrito. And then there's a place called Honduras, which is a really good burrito. And sometimes I might get a little uh, iffy. If I eat at Sonic, which I think I've done twice in 15 years, as far as their breakfast burritos, I'm going to get sick in my stomach. Don't know why. I don't know what it is that causes it. So that's just that. Uh, and you probably know more about my system now than you want to know. All right, y'all. I don't see any questions coming in. <laughs> I'll give it another minute or two. Order my book, God in the Storm. Order five copies of the paperback. Give them away as gifts. You will be giving some people a gift of life if you do that because they're going to read it and they're going to learn something about what's going on in their world and perhaps the spark will happen in their brain and they'll uh start seeing things uh better so order that book uh, uh go to michaelbunker.com and uh subscribe i already asked you to subscribe to my youtube channel subscribe to michaelbunker.com which means you can do a monthly subscription donation which helps me pay for the show it's going to help me get batteries and help i got about two weeks i think to get these batteries that I need to get. And if not, I'm not going to have them for the show for, uh, before the election. I may not ever get them. Who knows? And I definitely, the days are getting shorter and I'm going to lose the opportunity to continue to do the show because we're not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to have enough power. So I'm hoping to get the last four batteries in the next week to two weeks. A McRib sandwich and a Big Mac with large fries and high fructose corn syrup, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> That's just making me feel bad just reading it. I'm not even eating it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to eat a McRib sandwich. That doesn't sound like food to me. That sounds like something they made, they like extruded for, through a machine. <laughs> I used to work at a bar that had a kitchen. Frozen's made to look like fresh made food. Yeah, that's probably it. Um I know Sonic has some good drinks. And by the way, I do stop at Sonic for coffee. Black coffee, their uh, Green Mountain coffee, I think, is one of the best coffees that I enjoy the most. 
And so I do stop. Uh, I've had McDonald's coffee. I've had Dunkin' Donuts. I had Dunkin' Donuts coffee when I was on my trip last year to Hollywood. I really liked it. How much do the batteries cost? They are about $90 a piece to start with. I have core cores to exchange, so I don't get a core fee. But then when you add taxes and everything, they're right about $100. So $100 a piece. And then I have to buy some cabling. So I'm saying $500 for all four batteries, counting the cables and everything else. Uh, McRibs is engineered food. Sounds like it. I've never had one. By the way, I don't eat it. Uh, uh, Chick-fil-A. I don't eat at Whataburger. I don't eat at any of those places. It's not, this is not a political thing. I don't eat at those places because my body does not consider them food. Does that make sense? It's not like that. I'm looking at them longingly going, Oh, I miss Taco Bell or I miss McDonald's or I miss, I don't think of it as food. It's, I also drive by hardware stores. And I don't think about eating anything that's in there. The advantage of using six volt batteries versus 12 volt batteries is when you take two six volt batteries, just think of the mass. So these are golf cart batteries. So they're big batteries. They're about the size of a car battery, maybe a little bigger. When you take two of those and you hook them up together to make 12 volts, you now have a battery that's that big. And there's that much more capacity in it. So having six volt batteries, people like to use them for their solar system because you can end up having more capacity per battery pair. Uh, an interesting article about that, the McRib fast food. Okay, I'll have to check that out. You should shave your beard into a goatee. No, I don't want to. I already look a little bit like the six fingered man on Prince's Bride. And I don't want to look like the six-fingered man on Princess Bride. If I had a goatee, I would probably look like the six-fingered man. I don't want to. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call them quits. I appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you help us out. Comment, like, subscribe. Hit the bell button on, on uh, YouTube. Share the videos with people. They're interesting and they're fun and they're educational and you could save somebody's life because I'm always spilling over with wisdom and understanding that people need. So share the videos with people, ask them to subscribe. Let's try to get this thing to 2000 um, subscribers without me killing myself by going to McDonald's and, and binging for one day. The McRib locator website doesn't show any available in the United States right now. <laughs> There's a McRib locator website. Dang my arms, though. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Am I looking good? Getting there. Working at it every day. Been to the gym today already. All right, guys. God bless you. Lord willing, I'll see you again probably tomorrow, but if not, the next day. As always, I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll talk to you when I see you.